Okay, so hello everybody, and welcome to the first of a new series of lectures on synthetic projective geometry. I'm going to try and present some fairly sophisticated ideas in projective geometry, things I haven't covered before, particularly focused on three-dimensional projective space, and upon curves, and upon the roles of lots of kind of exotic but also kind of fundamental ideas in geometry such as the idea of imaginary points and imaginary lines. Now it just so happens that this material could be presented and will be presented in such a way that not much if any previous schooling in mathematics is going to be required. I'm going to present the material with lots of movies and two and three dimensional models. There's going to be very little algebra. I'm going to discuss some theorems, but I'm hardly going to discuss any rigorous proofs. And that's mostly because I think this material can be best grasped just from looking at visual models of it. Now, I'm well aware that some people like to see a very rigorous approach and I have done a coverage of two-dimensional projective geometry with such an approach but in this course we're going to move on to cover subjects which haven't really seen a lot of study some of them are going to be completely new okay so today we're going to look at the basic elements of three-dimensional projective geometry and we're going to think about how these elements interact with each other both when they're finite and also when they're kind of at infinity so for example one of these elements is a line a line is thought of as a one-dimensional object and we think of it as going on forever so as well as all the finite points of the line, there's also a sort of extra point at infinity of a line in projective geometry. So a line is one of our fundamental elements. It's one dimensional. A point is another one of our elements. We think of a point as being zero dimensional. A plane is another one of our elements. You can see a light blue plane here. That's two-dimensional. And also we have space, or three-dimensional space if you like. And that's three-dimensional. And the fifth element for our consideration is nothing. So nothing just to fit in with the pattern we think of as being negative one-dimensional. So these are our fundamental objects in projective geometry and in addition to other things we're very interested in how these objects can interact with each other. Now there's two different particularly important operations that we can do between a pair of these so-called elements of 3D projective geometry and those are the meet and join operations. So the meet of a pair of elements is going to be the highest dimensional element which is contained within both of them. Okay? So for example the meet of this green line and this blue plane here is going to be this point here, which I've just added, this purple point. That's where these two elements meet, that's their meet. Because this is the highest dimensional object which is contained within both of them. Okay, so the other idea is the join of two elements, and that's the lowest dimensional element that contains both of them. So, for example, 
the join of these two pink points here is this red line that goes through both of them. And now you can probably see why nothing is considered an element. I mean, the red line and the green line, they don't meet. So their meet is nothing, which is an element as well. So in order for these two operations to always return another element, we need to include the idea of elements at infinity. So we're going to think of points at infinity, lines at infinity, and even planes at infinity. Okay then, so what we're going to do now is take a look at a two-dimensional view. In other words, we're going to confine our attention to the plane. And we're going to look at a few different things about sort of similarities between points and lines and also the role of points at infinity on a plane. So you can see here a fairly simple diagram where we've got a red line which is almost horizontal and we've also got a line which is going through a black point and I'm rotating this blue line around and marking the place where these two lines intersect each other with this green point here. That's their meet. So from this there are quite a few things that should be evident to you. One is that there's a fairly deep, although easy to see, correspondence between the set of all points on the red line, which is kind of represented by the animation of this green point here and also between the set of lines through the black point. So in some sense, which I shall make more kind of clear later, the set of all lines for a point is very similar to the set of all points upon a line. Now another interesting thing to notice is that the, the set of all points on the line seems to have almost a kind of cyclic nature to it. I mean, we see this line spinning around the point, and that obviously has a kind of cyclic nature to it, in the sense that this line continues to rotate round and ends up in a similar position to where it started from after half a rotation. Also, this point continues to move to the right, and yet somehow it seems to sort of go off to infinity and then return to where it came from, even though it's always moving in the same direction. And so I think perhaps the most profound thing that this simple little movie shows is what happens when these two lines become parallel to each other. In standard kind of Euclidean geometry, one says that parallel lines don't meet each other, but as I was saying before, in projective geometry the meet of two objects is always defined, and when the lines are parallel we simply say that their meet is a point at infinity, and one can see the logic of this as a kind of limiting case, where this green point becomes so far away that these two lines essentially appear parallel. And in fact, we use this notion to define parallel lines. So we say that a pair of lines in a plane will be parallel when their meeting point is at infinity. Okay, so what I've done now is add an extra line to our movie, which is a black line that's always parallel to our blue line. Now, as I was saying, parallel lines meet at a point at infinity. So, here we just have two parallel lines. One could have five parallel lines at different positions in the plane. They would still all meet at the same point at infinity. The thing is, though, as these lines rotate, they're going to meet at different points at infinity. 
and so we can then try to get to the answer of what if a set of all points at infinity on a plane look like and it actually forms a line at infinity in a way we can think of this line as a kind of ginormous circle that encompasses our infinite plane however it's not exactly a ordinary circle because just as when you rotate a line around a point after half a rotation you've got the same line so it's kind of like a circle with opposite points identified anyway we're going to get much more clear on the details of this later on okay so here's a three-dimensional movie which is going to give us a bit more insight into what these lines of infinity look like so what we see here is a green plane that has a black line through it and about this black line we have a pink plane that's rotating and we're looking at where this pink plane meets with this blue plane and that meet is going to form this orange line here so we can see that as this pink plane rotates this orange line is always shifting sort of towards the right as we're looking at the picture and so in quite a similar way to before when the pink plane becomes parallel to the blue plane we see this orange line shoot off to infinity and in fact at that time it becomes a line at infinity and if one thinks a bit about symmetry you should be able to convince yourself that in this case in this special case where the pink and the blue line are parallel to each other there's no particular reason for this orange line to be in any one direction more than in any other direction and so in some sense it takes a form akin to a kind of giant circle it's infinity although as I was saying before there are some subtle differences between um, this in fact it's just like any other line it just happens to be at infinity okay then so let's take a look at this question of the set of all points at infinity now to do this I've got two parallel lines a black line and a green line being parallel these two lines are going to meet at a point at infinity and what I'm doing here is varying the kind of direction that this line is pointing at I'm doing that using a sphere so that's more of a tool than something necessary for the understanding now hopefully one can see just by looking at the correspondence with where these lines hit the hit the kind of bluish gray plane at the bottom that what we actually have is essentially a plane of points at infinity so you might want to watch this animation a few times to try and convince yourself of it but what I'm claiming here is that the set of all points at infinity in three-dimensional projective space forms a sort of plane of points at infinity what does this plane look like? well this diagram suggests it's sort of like a sphere I mean um, a good way to think of it is that every if we pick a given point such as the point inside this red sphere well every line in a different direction through that point is going to highlight a distinct point at infinity because every line has one point at infinity and so essentially the set of all points in 3d space at infinity corresponds to the set of all lines for a point and this 
animation suggests that that has a sort of similar character to a sphere. Perhaps we could think of it as a sort of infinite sphere, a little bit like the kind of sphere of stars we see up in the sky above the Earth. But essentially it's not exactly like a sphere because opposite points in this animation on, on the red sphere antipodal points on the sphere create the same line. So in a way we can sort of think of this infinite plane as a sort of infinite sphere with opposite points identified in some sense. Okay so let me just finish by giving you an exercise to work on to help understand these topics more deeply. So what I'd like you to do is, for each pair of the five different kinds of elements we've been talking about, space, planes, lines, points, and nothing, I'd like you to write down what kind of elements you can get by A, looking at the join of two such elements, and B, looking at the meat of two such elements. For example, if you have two elements which are lines, then their meet could either be a point or it could be nothing, depending on whether the two lines are in the same plane or not. You could also think about what the meet of a point and a line might look like, or what the join of a point and a line might look like. And so I'd like you to write down all the different possibilities and describe what the point what the joins or meets could be